Hi, this is Brian Lai from Malaysia. I'm a lecturer from The One Academy. In this video, I'm going to make high resolution model from our previous blocking model, as well as putting texture on them. We will be covering modeling UV in Maya and texturing in Subsum Painter. Let's get into it. I have my block scene open again, and I'm going to export plate, fork, and one of the waffles. Import them into a new scene and now we can proceed to high resolution model. First start with the waffle. I'm extending the waffle a little more, but don't worry if it looks too perfect. We are going to finalize this later in ZBrush. Now we are recreating the plane. I'm using 16 sided cylinder instead of egg like we used to do it in the previous tutorial because this is a much bigger object. Then deform the geometry to match the slow resolution model. Here's a trick I always use for circle cap. I first create a cube and smooth them. Then delete the selected faces and left only the top surface. Then flatten it like I did in the video. And bridge those edges to close the gap. Remember to always press number 3 to preview high resolution model because that would be our final output. As you can see here, I am making a mistake creating the fork starting from giving it thickness. It would be best to start the fork by using the plane like I mentioned in the previous video, because it is so much easier to control that way. Creating object like this can be tough for some beginner because you would have to plan your topology wisely. Here I am adding divisions, and detach them into four spikes, then scale them to make it look spikier. And here you can see I'm deleting the thickness which I should have done this in early stage to cut me some troubles. Now you may press number 3 to preview smooth look. You can also apply crease for some edges to prevent them from smoothing, like you can see those big 9 I did in the video. It is a good habit to make a duplicate before applying smooth, so that I can revert my progress if it is necessary. After smoothing, I'm editing the wireframe to optimize the topology. Make sure all lines are useful in contributing the shapes. Now I'm going to export them separately because modeling the waffle is completely a different workflow. I'm exporting plate and fork to another OBJ and export waffle itself to another OBJ file. Now we may switch to ZBrush. In ZBrush, I'm importing waffle geometry. As you can see here, it looks super sharp in the edges. We are going to dynamic mesh it with 128 resolution in the setting. What this will do is to unify or combine all the rectangle into one single piece of geometry. Next is to go to top view, 
Make sure we are in auto graphic instead of perspective view and hold control to mask all the side we want to remove. When you are done, go to visibility and click hide PT. If you need to invert masking, simply hold control and left click on any blank area in the canvas. When you are happy with the shape, expand geometry tab and go to modify topology and click delete hidden. Go to dynamesh and make sure it is activated. Then hold control to drag in any blank area in the canvas. By doing this, ZBrush will remesh the entire geometry again and close all the holes. I'm still not really happy with the shape so I will be continuing to mask some of the area and repeating the process again. Hide PT, delete hidden and re the mesh again. I then use Move Brush. The hotkey here is BMT or BMV to deform the shape so that it looks more dynamic. Then go to deformation, play with the parameters here like polish, smooth or inflate to get the rounded shape we wanted. Then we are going to smooth deep areas manually by holding shift key and brush around the model. As you can see, we are now getting smooth rounded edge. I then use clay buildup, hotkey B, C, B to make those holes to look more random. You may hit Ctrl F to check wireframe. Now you can see that the topology is very crowded and is completely a mess and not usable created by the Dynamesh. So we are going to use Z Remesher to remesh it. It turns out to be better now. Go to export settings and uncheck group and texture. Activate smooth normal. Now we can export this and replace our waffle OBJ, then back into Maya. In Maya, import our ZBrush model and let's start to UV it. Carefully select the edges in the bottom loops. It is okay if you cannot manage to find one straight line. Just select those edges manually to form a loop in the bottom. Then cut them into two separate UV shell and unfold them. As a side note, Z remesh usually don't make good topology. It is always best to read topology manually, but since we are not going to put any rigs or animation into this thing, we don't really have to concern too much about this. It is only for still frame render after all. Then we shall continue to UV the fog and plate, make sure everything is unfolded and tidy. The fork and plate would remain in the first tile, and waffle will be the second tile, just like our previous video. In Substance Painter, again we don't need to bake any maps at all, that only makes our file heavier. First start with the fork, creating a base material and set color to white, roughness to very low, and metallic to full. Then put them into a folder and name it fork. Apply a black mask to the folder and assign white color to fog UV. Next up, we are creating a ceramic base material and assign them to the plate. Then, we will create a base material for the waffle. Assign orange color and be sure to target only the waffle UV.
I then create a new material and name it rough surface. Set height to minus 0.3. Then assign a noisy dotted mask so that the surface will show up little holes and rougher. You can always change your blending mode. In my case here, I'm using multiply for the rough surface and set the opacity lower. We can then stack paint effect under rough surface mask and paint those deep area manually like what I'm doing in the video. Then I can apply a few effect under the material, putting some noisy mask into the hike slot so that it presents a bumpy surface. If the effect is way too strong, you may add level stack on top of the fill and target to only high. Now you can adjust the strength of the bump and we can continue to paint the side of the waffle. Now we are creating another material to paint bright color instead. We are having three level colors in the waffle, mid-tone from the base material, dark tone from rough surface and bright tone from what we are painting right now. Remember to apply grunge alpha in your paintbrush. I then do the same thing over and over again to make more levels of tone to enrich the look of the color map. Also adding some micro bumps. For the fog, we will give some roughness variation to the surface create a new material and active only roughness channel, assign grunge map to the mask like I show in the video. Next up will be the scratches, same method with our previous video. For the plate, we are going to mimic the pattern from the reference, create a dark color material and paint under its mask. Picking the right alpha map for the brush is crucial in this one. Here I found this, Cow Brush Preset Alpha 50 works the best for this scenario. Remember to keep rotate your brush to prevent from repeated patterns. Now we can proceed to add in roughness variation and scratches like we did to the fog. Always remember to view your roughness from a shallow angle to judge them. By looking straight down can be difficult for us to judge if the roughness looks right. Then I'm also adding color variation to the plate and the fog. Over the years teaching in my career, I found students are lacking of painting color maps. They're mostly paying their effort and concentrate in roughness or bump, but don't really care about color. I strongly advise to always enrich your color map in their tones. This is the core factor that heavily affects what your audience perceive. I am now continuing to further enhance everything. Make sure all of them look good for both close and far distance. Don't worry. What I'm going to do after this video is exactly the same. It is a repeating process to enrich every channel. No big changes or magic trick will be made. Last step in this tutorial is to save your file. We will be discussing how to export this to Maya in the 9th lesson. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.